Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our Factorio Space Age playthrough. We have... it's been a few days since I recorded the last episode, so I don't remember what we were doing at all, but I left some notes to redo mines with big miners. We needed more crude oil. I did do that before the end of the stream after the last episode. I plopped these down and I put speed threes in them, and then we just piped that over to here with pump. So I should be okay on oil for now. Um, I might need to improve my plastic still. Seems like plastic's actually okay. I think I might have added more beacons or modules or something. What did I do? I don't know, but we seem to have enough plastic now. Uh, so I'll take off the get more crude oil note. Um, getting rid of spoilage is also a thing. Let's do that first, because that's pretty easy. Um, how much spoilage do we want? I don't know, but I do need heating towers. We'll do that. And yeah, so the game updated, by the way, and now we have a quality selector down here rather than a drop down box. So that's kind of interesting. And you can still change the quality with control or shift alt scroll wheel. Um, but you still do have to click twice on this. It's not an instant confirm. I hope they add that as an option in the settings where you click once here and it just automatically confirms it. And that would, yes, it would require you to select the quality and then the item, but it's what a lot of people have been asking for and I would also prefer that. So I hope they add that as a possibility in the future. Um, Cause I'd rather have a system that yes, while it requires me to pick quality before item and you have to get used to that overall it saves you one click every single time i i would prefer that uh anyway what we're doing here is melting or burning i guess we're burning not melting uh some spoilage so this should be pretty chill uh we're gonna wire these up we're gonna read the request uh, the contents, yep, and we're going to enable based on spoilage being greater than 50,000. I don't know, that seems like enough to hold on to on Novus. Um, and then we'll request spoilage of a thousand and call it a day. All right, that's easy enough. Spoiler just taken care of. <laughs> Done. And yeah, so now we need to redo the mines with the big miners. This should be pretty easy as long as I have enough of them. 20 is not enough. So why don't we just quickly boost our mining drill? They're not miners. Um, grab another 40 of them. And then that should be enough. I have beacons and I have speed modules. And then despite the fact that we worked a lot on the Gambletron 3000, I think we're gonna need to work on the Gambletron 3001, which is gonna be bigger, better, badder, and uh, more capable of handling spoilable objects like biter eggs. Cause I do wanna work on prod module threes. So Gambletron 3001 is coming right up, <laughs> which it's uh, the number of hours we're spending out of the last 10 hours of gameplay working on just Gambletron is kind of hilarious. But, you know, I assume that's what a lot of people are dealing with in their own playthroughs, too. When they go down the quality rabbit hole, they can't get out. deconstruct all of this. I assume there's a swarm of, yep, construction bots coming over here. Bots handle it so well. Yeah, so, okay, here's the thing. With, I don't, I don't hate the idea of using bots to do all the gambling, but the problem is the ratios get thrown off. So, for example, if I'm doing speed threes and prod threes, they're both needing, you know, rare blue chips. So I, 
if you are to do that, you just have to make sure. I mean, in this case, it could work because these need everything in the same ratio. And yeah, I, it, the ratios don't matter as long as you put the right conditions on everything. Um, kind of. You also have to put the right conditions on things running in the first place. Uh, but if you if you put all the right conditions on everything, the ratios should work themselves out. Like you're only running the initial crafting of an item if you need the quality you're seeking of that item. And then you're just recycling everything when you have too many of a certain quality. It should work out OK. Um, how do I want to do this? Do I want to maybe I just put beacons in the middle I mean maybe we just go like fully spaced out like this this feels so weird but why not um and then we can just beacon along the middle and then power on the outside edge I don't see anything wrong with this uh, I could do prod modules, but it's... Uh, oh, I just tried to zoom out. 1.2 million, that should last me a while. I don't really think that's necessary. And now we've got stacked ore, which is dope, fresh, and I love it. Not to be confused with dope fish, which is a Commander Keen reference from the... Uh, classic Commander Keen games of the 90s. <sighs> cool. And that should be more than fast enough. Uh, let me upgrade all of this to green beltage. I don't really know what's happening here, but we'll just greenify it. Now, this can't be right. You know, like, those bots should not be coming from all the way over there. Hmm. I wonder why mine didn't do that. Do I not have enough? I have 50. I don't totally know what. Or did I walk away too f Did I go too far away? What's the radius on this? On my own personal is what I'm trying to... Actually, how do you see your own r roboport radius again? Maybe you can't when you're inside of another radius. Anyway, uh, this is done, and I should certainly change these to stack inserters, right? Is they're faster? They're not that much faster, though. Loading, loading speed is not an issue right now, so never mind. I'm not going to worry about that. Um... Okay, so I'm going to copy this, because this is a pretty good blueprint. The power's a little weird. Maybe I should fix the power first. Um, yeah, let's... Power nice and lined up. Like that. There we go. And then we'll also line this up. Now, this is a little bit problematic because the beacons don't line up. Um, let's see, why don't I... Well, I don't, I don't know why I did that. I don't have to remove these, but let's make it balanced. So in a stretch of... How many is this? I have six. So then why don't we just center... Oh, they can't center themselves. Okay, I'll offset towards the front of that set of three. Like that. And then I'll put lights to each one. And then I can copy this whole schmidgen. Yeah, yeah, quality power poles, I know. We'll put them in the Gambletron eventually. <laughs> I have so many, I have so many things I need. Can we talk about how messy my blueprint book is? Dear God, it's bad. Um, I, just, I never know how to organize these things. Big miners. 
Nalvis early stuff. How about we have Nalvis late stuff? <laughs> Why not? Uh, but it's not just Nalvis late stuff. Maybe maybe using the maybe having a different book for different planets is the mistake. Maybe I should quantify them more by their tech level than what planet they go on. Anyhow, that's good enough for here. Now we do the same over here. Decon all of this. And then let that go. There's also about a billion coal right here. I mean, 12 million if you count productivity. So that's a lot of coal. And there's more copper over there too. This is the only one I'm slightly worried about. I do think I should probably tap into this copper patch and add it to this one rather than upgrade that one. And then the coal, 2.6 million multiplied by all of our productivity should be fine. Same with the stone. So I really think we're fine. Uh, once we upgrade these two iron patches, that should be plenty as well. If we run out, it's just because our train system isn't handling trains fast enough. So I'll probably do a train pass by in the middle and add a third train or something, and then I think it would go a lot faster. And then these need to be stack outputters. Let me change that. And what else needs to be stack output? I guess all this stuff can be stack output and that will save me a lot of headaches down the road because this is essentially quadrupling our belt throughput for zero effort I mean I guess that's technically more than zero effort but it's pretty minimal and you guys know me I love me my minimal effort when it comes to these sorts of things work smarter not harder okay so we'll grab our blueprint uh, let's see, I guess we should remove that, that down, and then is this covering the entire patch? No, we're off by two tiles on the side, so let's put it out here. And then we have a couple rogue pieces. These are rogue. And this is rogue. So we'll just get those taken care of real quick. Oh, shoot. I meant to put modules in the miners too, but I didn't. Um, will it matter though? Look at that speed. 15 a second from a single... Even if it's stacked, I need to do all sorts of new math. How many can a stacked turbo hold? Turbo stack is 60 times four, 240 items per second. Are you kidding me? That is insane. That is just absolutely bona fide nutso insano numbers right there. Um, but yeah, we will put speed threes in this because why the heck not? And now we can have basically infinity ore on one belt. <laughs> no, I'm I'm demon anti. Yes, yes you are. Uh, hi demon anti. I'm insane. Anyway, okay, so that should do the job just fine without any excess changes. Now, is it possible that the 600 multiplies into be too much for this chest? We already said with productivity and drain, it's like tripling. Tripling and a half. Three and a half times 600. 18, 2100. Can this fit 2100? I believe it fits 2400, so we're fine. This one, same story. 
Okay, I think, I think that'll get rid of all of it. Now, this is not working properly, because that needs to be a green. And that adds up to two reds, so that's actually the most we can get. I cannot believe that that's 240 iron ore per second flowing right there. That is absolutely nuts. That is just crazy. I mean, how many blue belts is that? Because a green belt is already four thirds of a blue belt, and then you multiply that by four. So that's 16 thirds of a blue belt. That's more than five blue belts. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I love it. All right, so we'll fly down south and do the same thing. Or I guess we'll deal with copper first. Do I need to fly? Why am I doing that? Why don't I just use map view? Come on. Come on, Crydex. Get with the times. Get with the times, you old man. Okay. Um. I will just... Well, I guess it is hard to see until they've deconstructed it, what I'm doing. Uh, so we'll first deconstruct the mine. And then we'll come back to reconstruct it once the old mine is dead. Missing construction robots, eh? I guess we never put in any sort of condition to auto-place the conbots in to network. So let's do that. Um, okay, so we'll just do a simplistic version. And wire you up. Read robot stats. Available conbots is Z. So if Z is less than one hundo, go for it, and we'll request 50. Okay. So that'll get conbots moving. Uh, construction robot frames not be made in uh, EMP. But we also have not beaconed this yet, which is pretty ripe for beaconing, if I might say so myself. Uh, let's put that there, and then I have to handle this pipe not disconnecting. That speed's in there, and that should get me a lot more robot frames. Yeah, I mean, how much speed is this adding? 100% speed, but 150% effectivity. So that's adding 150% crafting speed to these things. That's crazy. It's crazy numbers. And that's without any quality. Nothing there is high quality. That's just the new beacon effect going for it. All right, so that should be more construction bots. And we're getting that done. Perfect. So we'll place this. Ooh, it looks like we can cover the whole patch. Right about here is good. Yeah, it's like, it's exactly perfect. There's none there and there's none there. So that's really nice. Whoa, that's more damage than I like to see. More lasers. Eventually, we're gonna need to roll quality for lasers and put higher quality lasers everywhere. Or Tesla turrets or something, I don't know. There's a lot of options we have. Beacons on Mark II assemblers. Yeah, it is kind of funny to do that, isn't it? But, you know, it works. So, who am I to judge? 1.8 million is gonna last me a while. The real question is, are these fast enough? And I think the answer is no. If I just do this, I can probably ignore having another copper patch for a long time. We'll let that finish out. Seems like the power is connected. And then a single red belt of stacked is technically better 
uh, than my old one. Because my old one was just two red belts. But now we can do two red belts stacked, which is the full green belt stacked. If we bring green all the way to here. And then that goes down to our new area, which we no longer need to use stack inserters for. Because now I'm stacking from the mine already. Uh, shucks. We're out of calcite. Cool, 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 cool. Well, that's bad. That's bad. Derpamu should be full of calcite. Um. Hmm. Interesting. Available on planet zero. Why are there zero on the planet? What have we done with our foundries? Uh, we're out of lube. That's not good. How did that happen? Because that's just heavy oil. Oh, did I just destroy my lube making? No, no, we did not. No, no, no. We did not. Um, it seems I disconnected this from heavy oil at some point and never fixed it. That's the problem. So that should be easy enough to fix. Maybe here. Put that there, put that guy there, and then the heavy oil will flow in. Hopefully start everything back up again. That's been a problem for a long time. I'm surprised we haven't noticed things breaking before that. Oh, and no, I'm out of speed modules. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Okay, everything's breaking right in front of our very eyes. Uh, forgot one pipe there. And then the the heavy should flow, please. Please and thank you. There we go. All right, that'll get turbo belts running again. That'll get foundries running again. Now, the real question is why are speed threes not functioning. Ah. Quality speed threes are actually becoming increasingly prevalent. We also should... Ah, this really bothers me that there's no... Yeah, I, I wish we had better conditions here because I would love some sort of optional requests setting. Um, where you could request something, but it wouldn't head towards unfulfilled requests. But anyway, uh, we are out of foundries. I'm still confused on why... Are we not requesting calcite on Nalvis? Is that the problem? Are you not requesting calcite? It's requesting 5,000 freaking calcite. Did we burn through calcite that fast? Here on Nalvis? Yeah? No, no. It burned through 6,000 over the span of two hours. So as long as the Derpamu shows up once in a while. So... But this is requesting... Calcite here. Did it drop... Is it is it always dropping all the Calcite on Gleba? Gleba certainly isn't using that much Calcite. Uh... Leba, what does your calcite consumption look like? We've only used 4,000 the entire time Gleba's even been here. 5,000, I guess, but still. So that's not it. Where's all this calcite been going, then? 
Something's fishy. Because the derp removal has been making the rounds for hours. We shouldn't have run out of calcite on Nalvis. Unless... There's something I missed. Um... I don't know what, though. I don't know what. I guess we'll find out in a minute when it gets to Navis if it drops the calcite down or not. It should. I am outserting the calcite. No, I'm not. It's just sitting in here. It should be anyway. Um, and then the bots can come pick it up. And we're also requesting 200 speed models. Why not 600? Okay. So it did its Glaba trip. Probably dropped a few. A few calcite. Yep, it did. How much calcite do we have? 6.6 thousand still? All right, well, we should be okay. Good being keyword. And yes, uh, back to what you were saying, Demon Ante, I could just make Calcite on the Cridania platform now, now that we have that option unlocked. Uh, there are so many things you can do in Factorio now, it's absolutely nuts. There's so many ways to spend your time. Uh, like, I can't even. I can't even. So... We can either get five ice or three ice and two calcite. It's kind of the two options, but you have a much, it's slightly different because this is really only using 0.8 oxide chunks and this uses 0.95 oxide chunks. So technically it's not quite that ratio, but it, it's close enough. Um, but yeah. How much calcite would this actually offer me? Not very much right now. My consumption is 3.7 a minute oxide chunks, which would only be... Not very much calcite. So we would have to probably make a station that doesn't sit over Nalbis to collect calcite. Now, if we repurposed all the chunks into the, you know, because you can reprocess them into other types of chunks at a reduced rate, that would help. And obviously there are sections we're not collecting, but you still just don't get that many asteroids around Navis. So we'd probably want to make a ship that like goes between two planets, back and forth, Navis to Gleba maybe, and then back, and then it would uh, give us plenty of the chunks. Whoa, there goes the calcite. That was a cool moment. Glad we caught that. And now we can watch them all land. Receiving platforms open. Ah, there we go. So what was wrong then? Why did this wait so long? Hmm, I don't know what was going on. I don't know what was going on. But, uh, okay, so these should get modules. And now we need to put the blueprint. Yeah. Up that there. Done. And then same thing here. Wait, why are those still not deconstructed? Oh, huh. Probably because they're outside of a construction zone. That would do it, would it not?
Place that down. Alright. That should do it. Uh, the loading is fine. The unloading we already changed to stackified. So. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So that should fix... Just about all of our stuff, right? And then power. I mean, if I run out of plates, I can always change these, but I don't think we're gonna run out of plates anytime soon. Are these fast enough? Maybe I could make these a little faster. Now that I, I think this was before I had added, um, whatchamacallit, added more. Uh, nuclear power. So I think I can switch these back to being speed threes all. What's up, Heatzor? Oh, you didn't miss much. We just replaced the miners with big miners. Playing a little slow today. Just working on getting things done. Okay, so that'll make this even faster. So fast, in fact, I need to... Change something like this. Balance out the sides. That should fix that problem. Also, are we making enough molten? Oh yeah, we're making more than enough. More than enough. One of these makes 500 a piece, and these need about 100. So we're good on that front. All right, there we go. Okay, so the copper... It is restricted to a single red belt. Maybe I should upgradeify that. Turbo... Super Turbo Turkey Puncher. All the way to the end here. Call it a day. I'm making Molten enough. I don't get it. <laughs> Is that a pun? I'm, I, I'm, uh, I'm sl very slow today, apparently. Uh, I don't get it. I don't get it one bit. More, oh, more than enough, molten enough. That's a stretch. I'm normally all for puns, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna call, call the pun police on that one. <laughs> this seems like it's not enough copper, but I think once everything, it's really just because the belts aren't saturated yet, I think. I don't think we can consume that much copper for a second. Maybe we can. But I think these belts are going to back up pretty quick. Um, okay, so we did this thing. Redo mines with big miners. Delete. Let's just make sure they're all functioning. That seems to be functioning. Irons seem to be functioning. Oh, I need to fix the iron. Where is it? Right here. I can just redirect uh, that belt. Um, so that's done. That needs to be side loaded. Did I f uh, screw the copper up? Oh, the copper's fine. Um, and then. Looks like the coal is good, and the stone is also good. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Are you a French demon? What's the difference between a French demon and an English demon? <laughs> that sounds like a, a setup for a joke that I don't know the punchline to. <laughs> something with a croissant, or, or something. I don't know. Uh, Alright, so yeah, that actually is an absurd amount of power. Look at that. Look at that power usage. It's really the EM, EM plants, though, that are using all of it. 
Wow. Um, so I may need to invest in a non 2x2 two two nuclear plant. How much efficiency am I losing? So if you had an infinitely wide setup, you get an adjacency bonus of three for every re every reactor, which means its total output is an output of four times its original. In this setup, the output is three times the original. So the boost would only be 33% more power, and that's for an infinitely wide section, which of course it wouldn't be. So it would probably be closer to like a 25% boost. That might not be worth a whole new blueprint, to be honest. So, instead, what I might do is make use of all this space right here and just let my bots go to town and place an offshore pump somewhere over here. And then that's pretty much all we need to do. As I know, looks like we're short a few things. Yeah, I could start rolling quality on nuke reactors. The problem is I, I just, my base is so crap right now. Like the, I don't know where we're getting concrete from, but it's not fast. Yeah, it's these things. I could at least upgrade them to tier three assemblers. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of little issues like that that I don't really want to have to iron out right now. <laughs> um, so, I won't. Instead, I will just let it figure itself out over time. And we'll work on... What's next? More epic quality stuff, I guess. We did talk about Prod 3 modules. Maybe I should do that next. Oh, but it's so complicated. I guess first thing I should do is use these 42 epic Q3s that we've got and finish putting these guys in the quality rollers. So that gets the most possible, until we have legendary, this is the best we can do in terms of ratios. What have we been getting, by the way? Uh, quality module three. It's definitely picked up. It looks like I've gotten a little under one a minute, but I think now that we've fixed production of copper and stuff, I'm hoping, didn't we math it out and that shouldn't, shouldn't that be like 1.2 a minute? I'm vaguely remembering we had over one a minute, not under one a minute. So we'll see if that increases. Um, now that I've replaced all these with epics. We'll see. Anyway, let's... Uh-oh, we don't have enough blue chips. Hold on. What the problem is. The problem is one of just the rate. These just aren't fast enough. Okay. Uh, well, the good news is these are useless now. So we have room for more beacons. power even sadder. Ooh, that's real sad. We're almost up to 1.21 gigawatts. Ah, uh, gambling. How you take all my power. I guess it's actually not even gambling that's taking all my power. It's just making a lot of circuits that's taking all my power. Um... need to be faster. 
guess I could use up even more power right there. Can't believe this is eating all my blue, blue circuits. Uh, we did speed up the oil pumps, yes. I guess having higher prod 3 modules will help here. Another thing that would help, that might pay for itself, would be this guy. Another 10% processing units. It's more free stuff. Okay, these are heating up. Still not hot, but they're heating. And do we have water? We do have water. Cool, cool, cool. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, the oil is good to go. Plastic is still more than fine. Um, now, what what is going on with iron? What did, did I not stop? Why are we still mixing regular plates in? What? Where are these? What is? What's going on here? Oh, we're just still smelting regular iron. Stop that! You're wasting so much iron ore doing that. We have beautiful foundried stacked iron. We do not need none of these boring steel furnished, inefficient, inefficient plates. None of that. None of that nonsense. Uh, coal. Coal is doing something weird, too. What's going on here? Uh, it looks like we are finishing out this coal mine and that coal mine. Okay, that's fine. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Uh, finally... Yeah, 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 okay. It's just crazy to me how many circuits we're consuming all to make just a few epic. I really wish this was fuzzy search, by the way, or whatever they call it, where you can just type quality three and it will find what you're looking for because we're looking for something that includes quality and three, not necessarily with nothing in between those two terms. <laughs> uh, anyway. Can you do, like, star quality? No, 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 you can't. So you have to type quality module 3, which I think is unhelpful. Um, anyway, this is a lot of resources to go into less than one per minute. Epics. Which scares me for what prod 3s are going to cost, because they're the same price, apart from the extra bonus material. And I can't make them any cheaper either. But, we'll do what we can. So, here will be the Gambletron 3001. Here there be monsters. So, Gambletron 3000, we learned a lot. Great proof of concept of using combinators and timers to run two crafts in a row and good usage of understanding the outputs of how many buildings we need and such. So I think the next level would be a bigger setup, but not... Uh, there's just so many ideas I have clinking around in my head. Because part of me wants to make just a giant setup where every building is controlled by circuits from the beginning. But that doesn't make too much sense because we already, we're gonna need some number of initial crafters and then some number of secondary crafters. So I think it does make some amount of sense to have two groupings of assembling buildings. You've got the assembling buildings that are running the original craft on the basic ingredients and then you've got the ones that are running the craftings of the recycler outputs. Now, obviously, we can just send the common recycler outputs back to this belt and, uh, you know, priority input them. 
And so then we can save our secondary assemblers to not have to run as often because they only run on uncommon and hires. Whereas now I've got this running on the regulars too. Um... just so many ways to do things and so many biters that want to be a part of what we're doing here but I do not let them in no sir and then we've got the biter eggs which we've already talked about this in previous episodes but man does it add a snag to this whole process to have freaking biter eggs going um, we're just gonna plop this here and we're gonna change to prod one and prod two, so that's done. Uh, the requests are wrong. These guys. Ooh, research, sweet. Oh yeah, the bio labs. Yeah, that helped a lot. I was wondering, I was like, wow, that finished faster than I anticipated, but that's because we have an extra, whatever it is, 1.2.5-ish productivity on science packs. So even though that previous one cost us like 3,000, it really only cost us like 1,500. Um, tempted to do another. I feel like could be oh gosh that's expensive 4000 packs for more laser damage I'm going to do it I'm going to freaking do it because right now Gleba is only under the protection of lasers which are not very well suited to protecting from stompers I'm actually fairly convinced the whole Gleba base is just going to go down in smoke as soon as as soon as the the expansions hit, we're we're gonna have problems. I probably should work on rocket turrets on Gleba. Um, I don't know. Th that laser damage will help. They do have a lot of laser resist, but percentage based resist means another eighty percent damage is another eighty percent damage. You know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, little little stompers. Versus big stompers. They do have 8,000 health. That's kind of absurd. Um, I don't know what the range quite means. Because they... Is that the radius of their stomps? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so a behemoth biter has 3,000 health. Whereas a small stomper has five times that, basically. So this is like five behemoth biters. A medium stomper, in terms of laser damage, that's what I mean. A medium stomper is like more than double that. That's like 12 behemoth biters in one package. That is a lot of laser damage you need to deal to one enemy. That also does more damage than a behemoth biter. Uh, does it talk about its stomp damage? Or is that just its acid splash attack? Hmm. Yeah, that might just be it. Yeah, I could send... Yeah, they don't have any electrical resistance. So, I could send over... I haven't even started making any Tesla turrets, but I could easily make those on Gleba. Um, did I say Gleba? I meant Fulgora. I could easily make some here. And then the Hendrickson is the one that's going back and forth. So that could bring... No, I guess the... the good... The, the Derpamu. Nope, that doesn't go. The only one that goes to Fulgora is the Hendrickson. Okay. Interesting. Did I watch the video? Yes, I did, unfortunately. Watch the video of Stompers absolutely 
wrecking a base. Um, it wasn't pretty. Now what's happening here? Oh, we put quality in here, and it did the thing that's really unhelpful, which is making it so that the thing that's being requested is not the thing that gets built, because the thing that's being requested is a regular quality, and all you have is uncommon quality, and that's actually kind of annoying. Um, I really wish... What's the what's the best solution to that problem though that I just laid out about quality and you know we've talked about it before like if you were building a solar field and in most cases obviously there are times where you're like no I want my solar field because it's the perfect ratios I want it to all be uncommon solar panels but for the average player I think the idea of quality is like, I want to put quality modules in my solar production, and then I just want to build a solar field with whatever I have on hand. And there's no way to do that right now. I almost wonder if the way to do it would be to be able to set flags on each entity so that certain entities would automatically build with any quality available and other entities would only build with specified qualities by default. Obviously, you could swap from one to the other at will, but like when I build a solar panel, in most cases, I want it to just be able to build with any quality. I don't care. Once in a while, I might want a specific quality. But with something like a power pole, I would never want it to just build a power pole I place in a blueprint with a random quality because then it may it like it needs to build with the quality I intended otherwise it might not reach and then I would want a third option for the quality I have specified or higher right so like I could have uncommon power poles in a build and it would potentially put rares there if the if we had only rares but it would go for uncommons first. You know, like, I want something like that. That's how you would want the game to work. And then you could specify different examples where it's like, okay, only build the quality. Maybe it would be in the blueprint settings. Maybe that's the best way to do it. Is within the blueprint settings, there's quality settings. And you could have a checkbox that, or radio buttons, you know, where you pick one. And one of the radio buttons is only place the qualities I have specified. In which case, if you have things in there as uncommon, it'll only want an uncommon. You could put any quality, A-N-Y, not I-N-E-Q, <laughs> but any quality, and that would just literally build the, the entities you have in that blueprint with, and it will always prefer lower qualities um, if you have them, and then it'll build higher qualities. And then you could have, so what did I already say? Exact qualities I've specified, any quality and then specified or greater i think those are and maybe there'd be a version where you'd want specified or lower um so you might as well have that option if you're if you're already you know wishing for things and and i mean you know while we're in magical christmas land it, this is probably getting too complicated to be the core game feature, but you could then set the priorities on which qualities you would prefer above others. So there could be a version where I want the qualities I have set or higher, preferring the lower qualities first, or I could have the qualities I have set or higher, preferring the highest qualities first. So it'll put legendaries if you have them, but then it'll put rares if you don't have legendaries, and then it'll put you know, or epics if you don't have legendaries, and then it'll put rares if you don't have that. And then because you set it to only rare or higher, it wouldn't place uncommons or normals. You know, something like that is the type of control I wish we had over the system, and we don't have anything even approaching that. Um, it does look like I'm eating all my iron, interestingly enough. So... Oh, that's because I never switched these over to be two speed models. Let's do that real quick. Yeah, Alor, I want the same thing that the filters support and the ability to prioritize um, lower or higher first within that. So I really want two things. Now, what was I actually talking about doing? I have lost my train of thought. Oh, we were thinking about Glaiba weapons. 
Uh, maybe I just do rocket turrets, though? What do these actually require? We have all of that, except for rocket launchers. And we have all of that. So why don't I get some rocket turrets going? Um, just out of... Yeah, yeah, Spider-Trons are too much work. I have to bring fish from Nalvis to here. I'm going to need rocket turrets anyway, so why don't we get that going first? And we can think about Spider-Trons later. I don't even know if I've researched Spider-Trons, have I? Uh, what do these stack to? Only five, so let's do ten stacks. And then here we do rocket turrets. That's a different thing. <laughs> uh, rocket turrets. Uh, and we'll do, because this is something that I might want to ship off planet, I'll actually do like a lot, like 20 stacks or something ridiculous. Uh, and they, the crafting time on that is 10 seconds, which is not problematic. The crafting time on that is 10 seconds, which could be problematic because I need four of them each. I should cut down the time significantly. But, because I'm a smart smart lad, instead of doing that, I'll do this. That actually has a better effect than two modules. That has the effect of three modules in each building. Uh, the question is... Oh. Now, that's odd. You never set up assemblers? Yes, we didn't. All right. Fair enough. Let's boom puff our way out of here. Hopefully, we didn't destroy anything important. Yeah, we made it. Okay. Um. So assemblers. Assembler twos. Assembler threes, which need speed ones. Um, and then beacons. Which need a bunch of stuff I should already have. Um, now, problem. I'm going to cut that, and we'll have to paste it back later. Because we need those buildings to start crafting the other buildings. And I need it to place those three and the speed one. If it places the beacon one, <laughs> I'm going to be unhappy. <laughs> um, oh, we're still just missing two. So, we also need to cut the pipes. Or let's just do laser makers. And that'll get those two built. Now, do I really not have green circuits? That sounds like a problem, not a good thing. Uh, yeah, we, we got problems. Ooh, we got problems. How did this shut down again? This shouldn't be possible. Why is this shut down? This is supposed to run constantly. How did this shut down again? Hmm. Now that's problematic. Now I can filter spoilage on this as well, so I should. Um, but that still doesn't explain to me how such a thing is possible. Um, also really inconvenient since I'm not here 
I'm gonna need like some serious there's that thing again the worst part about remote view I love that we can do everything in remote view but not being able to mess with the ghost is really annoying I mean, you can mess with the ghost, but then if it gets placed while you're messing with it, it screws everything up. That's really frustrating. Uh, okay, so we need some some of this in the system. Which means... We need to put it into the system. Also, we're not... You know, maybe this is why it stopped. Is it because we're not burning through the jelly fast enough? Because we don't have enough heating towers? actually know rightly what the issue is. But we can certainly help a little bit by doing this. Um Yeah, so we need the mash or the jelly, or the... Yeah, yeah, Waskly, the cold start recipe is what I'm thinking about right now. We're an hour into the episode already? We haven't even gotten anything done. Dear heavens. Heavens to Betsy, as they say. Um, it's like one of my favorite sayings, and it's so meaningless. And then we need nutrients. It's always with the nutrients. Ah, it's not necessary. I was wondering, you know, there are times, and this is one of those times, where just using an assembling machine is going to make my life so much easier. Now, the irony here is that we can't make the assembling machines. <laughs> this is so annoying. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, Alright, so this way we can just feed... Eat these. And I don't have to worry about nutrients. And then I need the output inserters to only run when we need. So why don't we measure? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Idea. Idea has form formulated. So we're gonna read this belt. And this is only going to request when the belt has zero copper bacteria on it, like right now. And this one's gonna do the same thing, but for iron bacteria. And then, this is just gonna let everything be spoilage. That's fine. Oh, I don't have any long inserters either. Oh, that's annoying. Um, yeah, I guess I could do the input inserters being the condition. Why did I... I had already decided it was going to be the output inserters for some reason, but I don't remember if my brain had a reason for thinking that, or if it just defaulted to that. Because you're right, it will constantly waste stuff if I... It could have been because we're not constantly getting Yamako Mash passing by, but these spoil in like a minute, so it's not really going to matter if we preemptively make something we don't need. Um, I need a mall for uh, long-handed inserters here. Okay, that's at least gonna work. Um, Okay, okay, okay. So anyway, we have an active provider here and here, and then we do this and this, and then we wire these up to the network. 
No. No, we need a RoboPort connection here. I still can't believe we have to do it this way. This feels so clunky to me. It feels so weird. So we'll read the requests. And then we'll... What if I... But I don't want to read the logistics network. I want to read... Oh. Wait, wait, wait. No, I can make this work. You can read the request by reading it if it's a negative. Right? So I can just do iron bacteria less than zero. No, no, no. We want it to be less than zero, not, not one. Because it'll, it'll be less than one when things are actually happy and hunky-dory. We only want it if it's a negative request, which means we want it and we don't have it. Will these run? Which would be less than zero. Now... Then those are always putting into active providers. Now these should be grabbing, but they're not. Which doesn't... Disabled by control behavior. So that means we're not requesting. Oh. Well, that's because we're not. There we go, now that should work. No, they're still not working. Hmm. We're requesting 50. Nope. No. None. Sorry. Um, shouldn't this have negative 50 on the bottom? It doesn't. Ah! Uh, it will not go negative if it can't request. Why did I? No, because if I do less than one, then it'll still be working constantly if it doesn't need to. I don't want to always have one available and then... Ne negative requests have worked before in the past, though. What? Things go negative when... I think it's probably then when a bot goes to pick up four, but there's only one in the thing. That's when you get those negatives, because negatives show up. But yeah, I guess it doesn't just read the negative. So then I do need to do what I was previously doing. I was on the right track. My brain wasn't going crazy. Um, so now we're reading the actual requests from the network, which means we actually want that to not be connected to logistic. And we want to instead enable if iron bacteria is greater than zero. And these are gonna enable if copper bacteria is greater than zero. So this should now enable things to cold start. These will only be running when the requests are greater than zero for iron or copper bacteria, which is only when this loop is dead. So, I still don't even know how it broke in the first place because it should have been consuming bioflux constantly enough. I don't know. I don't really know what happened. We, we have a way to trash excess iron and copper, so it wasn't that. So yeah, I, I'm not really sure how that broke down. Maybe we ran out of bioflux momentarily or something? I don't even know. We need security cameras on Glaba. This is part of the problem. Um, so, I'm all for difficulty in games and stuff, but it can be frustrating when you don't know what went wrong. 
And this is an example where I really wish we could rewind time. Because it's like, uh, it's not even that I don't know how to fix what went wrong, it's that I don't know what to fix, right? Like, the system that we previously had went wrong somewhere, I don't know where. I, I, I With what we've seen working, it's hard to even imagine what went wrong. It could have been a variety of things, like if we ran out of Bioflux, that would make it break, but I don't think I ran out of Bioflux, because I don't have a reason to, to see that that's ever happened. So, it could have been end of belt stuff, but I don't think so, because we have... Previously, I didn't have um, spoilage getting taken off the end of the belt, but the Bioflux on the end of the belt shouldn't be getting spoiled, because these are requesting bio... not requesting, but they're using Bioflux at a fairly constant rate. Um, and, and these are using the bacteria at a fairly constant rate, to the point where it was running for multiple hours, or at least a full hour, with zero issues. So, I'm wondering if we had some sort of hiccup with nutrients or something. I don't even know. I do know we're using Bioflux fast enough that it would never spoil at the rate we're using it. And, at least with these pieces, the bacteria, that cycles through in one minute. So if it's running for 10 minutes, it'll run for infinity with the bacteria spoilage time. Because it's always putting out fresh bacteria, so you don't have to worry about it, like, death spiraling into more spoiled bacteria. Um, nutrient usage... Obviously, if you were in, ran out of nutrients, that could be how it breaks. But we'd have to be out of nutrients for a really long time. I don't know, but whatever. We figured out how to cold start it. It just concerns me that it ever broke at all. Because we had finally ironed out what I thought were all the issues with it. Um, anywho. Now we've got green circuits running again, so that's good. That was the that was the issue here. So that means we should be ha ah, beautiful getting assembling machines running again. So now that assembling machines are running again, we can put back our uh, previous blueprints here. Laser turrets and all this stuff. Okay. Now that'll get done, and we can finally, <laughs> finally get missile turrets on Glabo. Oh my goodness. Uh, we're also going to need to make missiles, but we'll have to do that in the next episode. We're already an hour and 13 minutes into this episode. Jeez. So yeah, missile turrets and prod module 3s, I think, are where we're going next. Oh, that's not limited in any way. Um, is that the case for these? Ah, I see. It is the case. I really should have parameterized this. Um, and then copied it, rather than just regular copy. Because I forgot to change the limits. Well, that should get us a good head start on the ingredients for Prod 3s, at least. <laughs> Alright, well, we're going to call it the end of the YouTube episode there. Um, but we're gonna keep streaming, so if you're here live, don't go anywhere. As always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and we'll see you all in the next episode.